Hello, this is Amin, and you are watching session 32 of ASP.NET Core. This is continuation of uh, HTML helper topic. And in this session, we will introduce two more HTML helper, checkbox 4 and listbox 4. Uh, first, we start with uh, checkbox 4. If you remember in previous session, when we want to add some feature to our cost register form, uh, we modified the model and view model as well. And in this session, I want to add one checkbox that when I click on this checkbox, and when I submit the form, the form uh, after the submission will be clear and uh, it is ready for the next data registration. But if the checkbox is unchecked and after the submission, the data will remain on the form and you can use the remain data for the next submission. Actually, we will not implement this functionality but just i uh, add the checkbox and then i uh, use the post method to see what we have in our uh, controller when we submit the form uh, that's why i add one uh, boolean uh, property to my create cost view model and i call it make form clear and then I create this checkbox with checkbox for HTML helper inside my uh, form. Let's flip to Visual Studio and implement the changes that I described. This is the project that uh, we have been uh, working throughout this tutorial. And this is the uh, view model that I want to uh, modify. And here I want to add another property which is boolean and it's type of zero or one and true or false and i call it make form clear after that i go to the controller the cast controller and the respective action method which is creates a strongly typed view and here inside create Cast view model, I can specify a predefined uh, value to this checkbox or I can leave it uh, empty. If I leave it empty, it would be false, it would be unchecked. But if I assign the value true to this field, you can see it is automatically, uh, since the form will be run, it would be checked. Also, if you remember in previous session, I said I can make this type of creating object and make instance of this object more simplified. And I don't need to repeat this type of the object and I can just add open and close parentheses here and also for this one. And now I have more clear code here. Then I switch to my view, which is uh, create a strongly typed view. These are the codes that I have added to this view uh, until this session. And uh, here the payments method that I have added in session 31. Now I want to add that checkbox that uh, enable the user to uh, make the form clear or keep the data on the form after submission. I keep it in a dive and I use again from HTML class and checkbox for HTML helper. Uh, regularly when I use checkbox for, I should use Lambda expression. And again, I use Lambda expression. And now I bind this uh, property, this method to make form clear and also here i can add the label that i want for example make form clear after submission also i can use uh, html attribute as well here but i will add it later now i want to uh, run the project and see the result of the 
uh, changes that I have implemented uh, in this session. Now project is up and running and I go to cost, create a strongly typed view. And as you can see, I have make form clear after submission checkbox here. Uh, and as you see, by default, it is checked because I set this value to my controller to true. But if I leave it uh, empty and I haven't assigned anything to this checkbox, it would be unchecked. Now I want to add uh, some classes, bootstrap classes to make it more stylish. And here I add the required classes. These are the bootstrap classes and they are not related to ASP.NET Core uh, topics. And I can use these class as well for checkbox. And now I save it. And in the controller, I'm, uh, I change this value to false to see the result and uh, build the project and see the result again. Now I need to go to the page that I want. And now you can see I have this checkbox unchecked and I can check it and I checked it manually here. The next topic that I want to uh, discuss and I want to introduce in this session is HTTP POST. By default, in the controller, when you call a action method and when you use this action method and you call a view, automatically, without adding any method in above of the action method, it is uh, HTTP GET. I mean, uh, if I add HTTP GET here, or even I haven't add this method here, this action method uh, call this view with GET method. But when I have a form and I want to submit something to the controller again, I should create another action method with exactly the same name, but with HTTP POST method. That's why I want to use HTTP POST method here and create another action method with the same name of the form that I have created. That's why first time when I go to this action method and when I run the project and go to this action method, I receive this form with get method. But when I submit the form as the form is submitted with post method, next time this action method with post method will embark. And also you can receive the data of the form that I submitted here with the input parameters of this action method. We know we use uh, a strongly typed view and it is bound to create cast view model. That's why we know the data will be in the format of create cast view model. That's why I create the input parameter with this type and I use create cast view model and I use model. And here return a view. I know after the running this project and submit the form, I receive some uh, exception, but just I want to check what I will receive after the submission the form. And in upcoming session, we discussed about the uh, submitting the data inside database or even inside the static uh, repository. That's why I uh, create one breakpoint here and build the project and run the project this time uh, with this breakpoint to see what I will receive uh, inside this action method after the submission the form. Project is up and running and I go to cast create a strongly type view. Now I change these amounts a little bit and I use September 8, 2021 and bill as a category and here I use my comment and I use cache method and check this uh, checkbox and press the 
uh, create button which submit this form and now you can see uh, this time this action method with post mark and with post method uh, embark and I have my data inside this model. You can see I have amount and also I have uh, the list of category which it's empty because I haven't submit the list of categories but I have category as a null and my comment and also the date that I entered and also make form clear is true and payment method is one one is cash that I entered in the static repository and also payment method list is again null. But I want to check why the category is null. That's why I stopped this debugging process. And I know the error is related to view because uh, I think I uh, mapped and I bound this category to a wrong uh, property that's why I check my create a strongly type view and check this uh, drop down list and I can see here with lambda expression wrongly I bound this drop down list to categories while I should bound this one to category instead of categories because categories is list of the category that I want to show inside this drop down list which should be used here but the submitted and selected data should be reflected in category and also you saw that the list of category which is categories and the list of payment method which is payment methods were empty inside the model that I submitted because I haven't bound these two property which is list of category and list of payment methods uh, inside my form. That's why I haven't received these two uh, lists but again I run the project and check whether with these changes and bound this drop down list correctly to category I will have the category in submitted form. That's why I save it and run the project once more. Now project is up and running and I will route to the action method that I want. And this time the HTTP get of this action method is called and I change the data and some of these fields and submit the form again. And this time you can see inside the model, I have the category because this time I bound the dropdown list correctly to the category inside of the categories. And uh, I have the rest of the data that I can use for registering the data inside database or even inside a static repository. I stop the debugging again. And also I want to add a list box uh, which will return the selected categories. Imagine I want to select the list of categories in, instead of just one category. Uh, that's why I should add uh, a list of a string uh, that I call it selected category and I should add this property to my view model first, create cast view model, and then I use a list box for HTML helper. Let's back to Visual Studio and implement these codes. First, I use this view model. And here, I add another property. And it should be list of a string because uh, these categories value is uh, a string. And I call it selected categories. And then I will go to the my view. And after the drop down list, I add another development. And inside that one, I use list box for HTML helper. And again, I use Lambda expression. 
And this time I bind this list box to selected categories. And also I need one I enumerable item, uh, which is the list of the item. And again, I can use model.categories, which contain the list. Let me save the project and run it once more to see the changes. Project is up and running and I can go to cast, create a strongly typed view. And uh, you can see I have the list box here and I can select all or part of the categories that I need. Let me uh, submit this form to see what I have inside the uh, action method with uh, post method. And here inside my model, you can see I have selected category which contain two items, which are the selected items. And one of them is bill and the second one is rent, the item that I selected. I stop this one. And uh, also, uh, same as the other HTML helper, I can add the uh, HTML attribute here. And after this one, I can uh, add my HTML attribute. And again, I use the classes of Bootstrap and run the project once more in a debugging mode to see the changes. And you can see this time I have this list box with more beautiful appearance. And in this session, we create one checkbox with checkbox four and also one list box with list box four. These are the topics that I want to introduce and show you in this session. Thank you for being with us. Don't forget to follow us on our social media, which their links are available in the description of this video and also in our website. Subscribe our YouTube channel. And once more, thank you for watching our tutorials.